Hey there, welcome to class. Flo here. Today I have a functional flow practice for you. It's a vinyasa flow, but more focused on the superficial front line, superficial back line, and also the functional lines. If you don't know about any of this, no worries. It's gonna be a fun practice. It's gonna challenge you in new ways and leave you feeling energized, still grounded, and very present. When you're ready to begin, let's come into a seated position, sitting on the heels at the back of the mat. Once you're there, take a moment to arrive, to settle in, feel the breath. Will you arrive at yourself in this moment, getting ready for the practice today? Establish a good rhythm of your own breath, a rhythm that you can maintain throughout the entire class. So it's not about being able to do all the poses, all the movements, all the shapes. It's more about how you do them functionally in your body, with control, with presence, and a good companion and guide through this practice is your breath. With your eyes closed, let's come into Balasana, child's pose. Notice the breath going into the belly, expanding the back with every inhale. How the belly is moving away from the thighs with your exhale. Keep rounding the back. Bring your hands next to the body, reaching towards the feet. With that rounding in the back, flexion in the spine, you start to lift your hips up. Slowly rise up so that the hips are coming over the knees. Once they are, you extend the arms out to the sides and open the front. And start to round again and close the front. Move the hips back, the arms reaching back. Lower the hips, but they're not touching the heels. Right before they touch, so the thighs have to work a little bit. You again lift up, move the hips forward, open the front once the hips are over the knees and close the front, round the back, let's do one more, lower the hips, chin to the chest, and lift up, open the front, reach the arms out and back, and come back, sit all the way down onto the heels, lengthen out through the spine and come into a tabletop. In the tabletop, come onto the toes, slide the hands back. With the arms straight, straight, lean back. Feel the toes, feel the feet, and lean forward. Lean back and forward. For three, two, one. Lean forward and stay there. Keep the arms straight, push the ground away. Feel the wrists, you're looking for a strong sensation, but nothing painful. Stay with the breath, nice and slow through the nose. And lean back. The fingertips are pointing towards the knees. With the arms straight, lean back. If you don't feel much here and you want to go deeper, then you can come out of it and slide the hands more forward. And then lean back again so that the palms lift up. You feel this in the fingers, the palms, the forearms. With this one, we're targeting more the forearms than the wrists. Let's release and come into a tabletop again. Extend the legs back for plank pose. You can always set the knees down if you want to throughout this practice. Now that we are in this plank pose, I should probably mention that this is not a beginner class. 
but you can of course make this work as well. Just modify it to the best of your ability, set the knees down, skip things, pause the video, take a break, make this work for you. Let's move the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment to arrive, walk your dog, bring one heel up and back, bend one leg, then the other. And then let's connect more to the stillness in the pose. It looks still from the outside, but the body is actually never still. It's always being moved through the breath and readjusted and kept in balance through the fingers and especially the feet. Let's roll forward from this downward facing dog, nice and slow with awareness. Plank pose and back to downward dog. Don't rush it. The challenge here and the purpose is to move nice and slow with awareness. One more time forward to plank. Back to downward dog. Bring your feet a bit wider apart. Roll forward to plank. Once you are in plank, lower the hips. For upward facing dog. Pull the shoulders back, open the front and move the hips up and back to downward facing dog. Move slow, one more time forward to upward facing dog. And back to downward dog. We do two more just like that. Come forward to upward dog. But from upward facing dog, we now add a chaturanga on the toes. Bend the arms, elbows in, plank, downward dog. One more just like that. Let's all meet back in downward dog. Release the elbows down to the ground for dolphin pose. Keep the legs mostly straight, move the chest towards the thighs. Open the shoulders and lengthen the superficial back line. Lift your right leg up and back, three-legged dog. Look forward, shift forward, one-legged chaturanga, one-legged plank, right knee to the chest. Rotate the left heel down to the ground, extend the right leg away from you for extended side plank. Point the right toes and from here start to bend the left leg, move your hips closer to the left foot. Hold it there, lots of stability in the right shoulder. Straighten the left leg. Land the right foot, starfish pose. Release the left hand down, lift your left heel up. Pull the right leg out, bring the right knee to the right armpit. And let's come into wild thing. On the exhale, bring the right knee to the, towards the right armpit. Step the right foot to the front right corner of the mat. And step the left foot to the left front corner of the mat. Bend the knees. Hands to the heart. For a wide-legged squat. And we're staying here for at least one minute. It's also a great opportunity for me to catch my own breath. I'm still not adjusted to the high altitude here in Quito, Ecuador. It's been over one week and still the heart rate is very much elevated. 
And then if I do a practice like this, of course, it goes even higher. So especially a practice for me as well, to focus on the breath and slow the breath down and therefore slow the heart rate down. It's good high altitude training. And let's continue here for five breaths together in silence. Bend your knees a bit more. Press the palms together. Start to straighten your legs, forward fold. Lift up halfway, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, forward fold again. Let's bend the knees, place the hands between the feet, and then step or float the feet back for Chaturanga. Plank, downward dog. Roll through your spine forward to upward facing dog, nice and slow with presence, focusing on the details. Chaturanga, plank, Downward dog. Lower the elbows down. Dolphin pose. Lift your left leg up and back, three-legged, uh, one-legged dolphin. Look forward, shift forward, one-legged chaturanga. Lift both elbows up at the same time. One-legged plank. Left knee to the chest. Rotate the right heel down. Right arm up. Left leg forward. Extended side plank, point the left toes. Lots of stability in your left shoulder as you bend the right leg, move the hips towards the right foot, hold, straighten the right leg, starfish. Release the right hand down, lift the right heel up, draw the left knee to the left armpit. Step the left foot up and over for wild thing. Draw the left knee to the left armpit. Step the left foot forward and the right foot for wide-legged squat. Hands to the heart, send the hips back. Make sure the thighs are pointing in the same direction as the feet, or better yet, the feet pointing the same direction as the knees. Don't worry if the knees come Forward over the ankle, over the toes. The body is designed to move that way. Bend the knees a bit more and hold for five, four. Draw the energy upwards through the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha, three. Two, and one. Release the hands down, keep the legs bent, and then start to straighten the legs slowly. 
to whatever degree accessible. Bend the knees again. Let's come all the way down to a squat and straighten the legs. Bend the knees and create a good foundation with your hands. Let's step, float or handstand the feet back. We will eventually all meet in a chaturanga. Elbows in, plank, and let's lower all the way down onto the belly. Readjust on the mat if you need to. Untuck the toes, interlace your hands behind the back for locust with C arms, but keep the feet on the ground, lift the chest, reach the hands towards the feet, and hold it down. Open the front, open the collarbones, the chest. Reach your hands more back and up. And release down. Check out the hips. And now we're lifting everything up, the thighs, the feet and the chest and you reach your arms up and over the head. Lift everything up and then imagine you're holding on to something with your hands and then you pull it towards you for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, open the hands when you reach forward, 5, close the hands when you pull back, 4, Three, two, and one. Release. Shake out the hips, come into the forearms. Or release the forearms down, I should say. Shake out the hips. We got two more here in the prone position on the belly. Bend the legs. Keep the breath going nice and slow. Flex the feet, then grab the ankles. Now you're not using your back or your superficial back line or your functional line to lift up. We're trying to extend the legs to, in order to pull the chest up. So it's actually work for the superficial front line and the functional line on the front. Start to straighten the legs, the chest lifts, bend the legs. 10, nine, eight, Seven. So the legs are pulling the chest up. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Release. Four arms down, arms down, shake out the hips. Now if you feel ready for the next one, check in with your own body, how you're feeling. We're coming into floor bow. For this one, very similar, we grab the legs, but this time you grab the feet, not the ankles. And you also point the toes so we can fully lengthen the superficial front line. Maybe even get a little bit into the deep front line. So grab the feet, point the toes, and now you use the back strength to lift everything up. The thighs, the feet, the knees, the chest. Lift everything up and extend the legs into your hands for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Shake out the hips. Let's place the hands underneath the 
shoulders or slightly back, so next to the rib cage. Untuck the toes, upward facing dog. Straighten the arms. Open the front. Look straight ahead. And exhale to downward dog. Now come on to the right fingertips and with your right hand reach for the left thigh. Grab the outside of the left thigh or go down towards the calf. Maybe even down to the foot. And then pull yourself into this twist while at the same time keeping the left shoulder nice and stable. Open but stable. Push the ground away with the left hand. Release back to downward dog, other side. Release back to downward dog. And then set the knees down. Beautiful work so far. Make sure you keep the breath nice and slow, keeping a steady, controlled, but calm rhythm. As I said earlier, that's also the only thing that helps me to stay grounded and keep the heart rate kind of low and not getting out of breath. It's really all about the quality of the movement and not how much or how fast you do it. It's better to move slower, in my opinion, to really increase your sensitivity, your awareness, your proprioception where your body is in space and all of that will help you move better through the day and hopefully also through life. Let's finish up. You bring the feet a little bit wider apart, the knees and the feet. And you don't have to sit so far back if this is now too much for the knees. Check in with your body as always so if there's any discomfort in the knees then maybe skip this one. But this actually might be one that might help you because it's working on the quads, again the superficial front line and also the back line, especially functional line since we're still in, uh, engaging the glutes also. I will show you real quick. We lift the knees up, uh, the hips up and you keep the toes untucked. You bring the hips over the knees, hands to the heart and then you keep the spine mostly uh, straight and long. So we don't want to backbend in this one. We actually want to keep the front line engaged so that we are not keeping it loose and lengthening and lengthening and lengthening it and coming into a backbend. Hands to the heart and you lean back as far as you can. Maybe look up and then come back forward. And that for back and forward motion is coming all from the thighs. Also the feet are pushing into the ground. So really nice to activate the front line. And we're doing three of those. So join me when you're ready. Hands to the heart. And we lean back as far as you can so that you can come still up and come back up. Two more. And last one. Last one we're gonna hold for three, two, one and come back up. Set the hips down, bring your feet together. Beautiful work. We're now coming onto a seat. So with the hips down to the ground, you can just come to the side, extend the legs forward. But for those of you that want to work a little bit more on strength, control and stability, Lolasana is a Fantastic pose to work on that. It's also known as the tuck planche. And so you bring the hands next to the thighs. Straighten the arms and then you lift the legs up. Cross the ankles, bring the legs through and we'll meet in a seated position. And set the hips down. Get comfortable here. 
flex both feet so that the toes are pointing towards you. And for our last pose of the practice, we come into a seated forward fold, Paschimottanasana. If you cannot grab the feet, then I recommend you bend the legs, grab the outsides of the feet, and then you scoot the hips back until you feel a stretch along the whole superficial back line, which runs from the feet up the heel, the calf, the hamstring, up the back, all the way up the back to the neck, the head, and connects to the, foot, the eyebrows. So actually there's a connection from the base of your foot all the way up to the forehead. So come into the position that works for you. For me, in order to feel it, I have to bend, I have to straighten my legs. And if you are one of those that also straighten the legs, then instead of bringing the head down to the chest first, bring the forearms down first, the elbows towards the ground. And then once you're there, you can tuck the chin to the chest and really round into it. Again, the function and the purpose of this is to lengthen the superficial back line, which, as I just explained, runs all the way to the head. So it makes sense to round the back. It makes sense to tuck the chin to the chest and curl into a little ball to really lengthen this line more. And because of this connection from the feet basically to the forehead, it is not surprising that many experience headaches from wearing the wrong shoes. So when you wear shoes, and then I will stop talking and we can just enjoy, you want to make sure that the toes have enough space so they are not pushed together, which is mostly the case, especially for business shoes, that uh, they're squishing the toes, so there's no movement. Also, you want to make sure that you have a good connection to the ground. So if you have a thick, firm or stiff sole of your foot, shoes, shoe sole, then this is really decreasing the sensory feedback you can get from the feet through, of, through the, from the earth, from the ground, through the feet. And of course, you want to make sure that the heel is in a good position in relation to the ball, ideally on the same height and so having the arch support or having the tight shoes, insoles or elevated heels or anything not for everyone but for the majority of people is just making everything worse and now let's enjoy for five breaths Slowly release, walk your hands back on your legs or on your mat. And let's come into a seated position with crossed legs. Sit nice and tall. Place your hands wherever it's comfortable. Can you create some more length at the back side of your body? Some more length in the lower back, some more length in the mid back, the upper back. So think of lengthening and reaching the crown of the head upwards. So you're not arching the back so the chest puffs out. That doesn't help with anything in your body. You want to create more length 
upwards. Close your eyes. And let's finish up this practice today with the probably most important part of the daily practice you can do, meditation. So let's simply sit here for two minutes with yourself in silence or gentle music and observe the breath. Notice the air flow in and out through the nostrils. And again, this is the absolute most important practice and you need to meditate every single day, even if it's just five minutes. This is the core practice that will probably transform your life and you as a person the most. And then you can, of course, and should add all the other things that yoga has to offer that we teach here on the channel. But it starts with silence. So let's enjoy it for two minutes. Slowly come back to the body, to the space. Come back to the surface you're sitting on. Take three deep, full breaths to fully arrive back here in this dimension. Thank you for joining me for this practice today. And thank you for staying until the very end and through the meditation. It's the most important practice and if this was challenging for you and your mind was busy and racing and the voice in your head was very loud, you could not focus and enter a place of silence and stillness, then you are exactly the person that needs to meditate more on a daily basis. Good place to start is our meditation program called Expand for free here on YouTube. Check it out and finally start practicing. Support the channel by subscribing, leaving a comment how you're feeling. And I'll see you in the next one. With love and gratitude. Namaste.